We are good to go, right? That's the electro boom thing. Hey everybody, Jason here. Today I'm gonna to be working on an iPhone 6 that was sent here for data recovery. This is an iPhone 6 that went into a shop for touch repair and after touch repair, it is not able to power on. So let's have a look at this thing. Here we are under the microscope. And as you will see, we have quite a bit of uh, mutilation going on here. Um, you can tell that they, they really struggled with the touch repair. Now, I don't know if they struggled with this touch repair like before or after they realized that the phone would no longer power on, but uh, I have spent some time looking, looking around this board and let me just give you a, a, a quick tour here. Here's our, our audio IC area. You know, it's things have been nudged a little here and there. Um, our Broadcom um, Cumulus Touch IC area, it has, you know, it has for sure been messed with and things have just, uh, things are just a little nudgy, you know. This is this is a naughty, naughty, nudgy board. And then let's, uh, you know, we got ball, we got balls popping out all the way up here around the Wi-Fi IC. Oh, Lord. This board was probably hopeless anyways. You know, aside from the touch repair, look at the craters that we have in the underfill up here next to the Wi-Fi IC. See this huge crack? This huge crack, it, you know, it runs all the way around. You can see it all the way over here. This is a stress-related crack. And uh, it's also why this board was in for touch failure to start with. So anyways, here's where we're at, CPU side. I have did some poking around here and I have discovered we've got some squeezage around the CPU, see it? And then I've also noticed we've got some squeezage around all this crap. So here is where I am at on this board. The first thing that I did was I hooked it up to a DC power supply and it draws normal current before button press. But after button press, it's got this big current spike. It's like an amp or an amp and a half of current. And this thing gets really hot. And let me show you what gets really hot. The part that gets really hot is this little inductor right here. That little inductor right there, if we have a look at the board view, we are going to see that that inductor creates PP1V8SDRAM. See, we have PPBUC3LX, PPBUC3LX. It is coming out of the main PMIC. So PPBUC3LX comes out right here. It's heading over to this big old hunky, clunky inductor, and it spits out of here as PP1V8SDRAM. This is the inductor that was getting hot. Now, if we switch back over under the microscope, we're gonna check this line in resistance mode. I've got my black probe on ground, and I'm going to put my red probe on PP1V8SDRAM. And we are getting 0 0.7 ohms, which in my book, that is pretty well just as good as zero ohms. My fear is that this thing has a short under the CPU. I mean, if you look at the way the solder is squeezing all over the place, it is entirely possible that we have a short under the CPU. But my hope is a little bit more optimistic. See, I don't want to put push this off onto another repair shop. If it does have an SRAM short under the CPU, somebody that can like reball the RAM or, you know, reball the whole entire sandwich, you know, they could likely be successful at recovering the data from this. I lack those skills. So let me see if I can do it anyways. Let's see where this short is at. So if we look at flex board view or whatever board view you are using, let's just look at the board view and we can look and see all the places that that line goes. And you'll see that the software I'm using does a wonderful job at drawing lines everywhere. So I don't have to hunt down red dots. Look at all of the stuff that we have on PP1V8SDRAM. So although this is a really firm short and it could likely be the CPU, this whole entire area got dicked with. Do we have it up here? Yeah, we see, we, we've even got it near the Wi-Fi IC up here. And we had balls swelling all over the place up there. This short could absolutely be anywhere. I am going to take, I'm just going to use the positive probe off of my meter. And I'm going to hook it up here to the positive probe on the power supply. We are going to clamp us on a ground lead here. And you know, while I'm feeling spunky, I don't like the voltage drops that we get from low voltages. Let's go ahead and hook us on a ground lead here. I'm gonna go ahead and use the ground from both of these. 
because I know that the, the, the wire that we have in inside these two power squids is like really thin stuff. And then the wire that I use, you know, my test leads, they're quite a bit thicker. So, you know, we'll get some voltage drop through this thin ground wire. So we won't, you know, get a, a real, you know, it, it's going to reduce the amount of current that this thing can draw. So um, that, that, that's why I did that. So let us, I'm going to just, I'm going to look at this with a thermal camera and see what this looks like. I am going to take, I'm going to put power in right here at PP1 V8 SDRAM while looking at it with a thermal camera. So here we are looking at a thermal image. I'm going to be putting, I've got my probe hooked to the power supplies anode, and I'm going to put 1.8 volts right in here on PP1 V8 SDRAM. Let's see what gets hot. We're drawing 3.2 amps of current. The CPU is not immediately heating up. This thing is sitting here sucking up five watts. There the CPU seems to gradually be heating up. I, I can see it gradually heating up. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced that's the CPU. Let's flip it over and let's have a look on the other side of the board and I'm gonna do the same thing. Now on the other side of the board, I'm not completely, let's just, I'm gonna have a look at flex board view and let's see all of our places that we could do this. I could put one V8 SDRAM in down here at this cap, down here at C1243, or I could go for um, this cap up here by the audio IC, but I'd kind of like to have the audio IC area out in the open. So let's see, I'm gonna try to get on C1243, and if we look at that under the microscope, can we get to C1243? Yes, that is these two caps down here. This is C1226, this one is C1243. So we're gonna have a look at C1243. That's actually where I'm gonna put my current in. So for this test, I'm gonna be putting my probe right there and it should draw, yeah, it'll draw three amps of current. So switching back to the thermal camera, we are gonna put our power in right here. Now it looks like the hot spot is actually right where I put the power in. That's probably not right. Am I touching ground? Okay, let's try that again. We're gonna put our power in here. Oops, the supply is being drawn down to 1.6 volts at three amps. And you know, it would seem that right here where I'm putting the power in is where it's getting hot. You know, that's sort of to be expected. Let's switch and I'm gonna put the power in up here. We've got another spot we can get on PP1V8 SDRAM up there. Let's try that one and see if our heat spot is in the same spot. You know, that spot really seems like it's staying hot, right? Hmm. Very interesting. Okay, let's hit it up here. I'm going to do PP1V8 SDRAM up here if I can stop my jitters. Boy, now it gets way hot up there. What in the heck? Am I reading the schematics wrong, guys? Mm, that's just, that's gonna be the trace inside the board getting hot, I bet you. All right, let's go to, I'm gonna slip back down here and I'm gonna do it down by the PMIC again. And I'm gonna keep extra close eye on the thermal imaging here. It actually seems like it's staying hot down here. That is so weird. Hmm. Let's raise up our temperature range here. And I'm gonna to touch up by the PMI, up by the audio IC again. Okay, we're gonna to have to get this lined up a little better. Um, okay, my uh, iOS device just died. Let's do it the old fashioned way, shall we? I'm going to take and I'm going to stick my hands on it. I'm holding my hand on the top end of the board here. And I'm going to put our current here on PP1V8 SDRAM. I love my thermal camera, but sometimes it can run you in circles. All right, so we are pulling three big old amps. This is going to be a solder bridge somewhere, I suspect.
three amps of current. All right, now here's what I'm gonna do. Since this supply is able to max out at 3.2 amps of current, that means I'm not having any drops along my wiring. I'm not having a significant enough drop. Um, at, what I'm trying to say is that at 1.8 volts, I'm not having a significant enough drop to keep my supply from maxing out. I'm still maxing out at 3.2 amps. So what that tells me is that I can set this supply up in parallel mode and deliver more current because um, it's maxing out this channel's current. So we're gonna set, uh, we're gonna switch the power supply to parallel mode. Now what we've got is both channels are set to 1.8 volts at 3.2 amps. So we're gonna be able to deliver 1.8 volts at 6.4 amps. Let's see if we can find it. So, <laughs> I, it's like 10 watts of power if it'll do this. I'm gonna put my hand on the board and I'm gonna put PP1V8 in right here. I mean 1V8 SRAM in right here. The supply draws, oh, let's turn the supply on. And that supply draws, see if it'll max that out. Yes, 3.2 on both channels. So we're delivering six amps of current. I'm meditating. Um, I don't feel what's getting hot. Um, I feel nothing. Damn ass solder bridge somewhere. That's what's getting hot. Hey, it's no longer pulling three amps though. It's pulling 1.8 amps. It's like I'm baking something in half, right? Nine amps. See, it, at this point, since it's not maxing out the supplies channel, I mean, it's not, we're not doing any good having it set in parallel mode. Let's go back to the top of the board. And now I'm gonna hold my finger on the CPU. Let's put our current in right here. I'm not convinced this is a CPU short. No warmth, I can feel no warmth whatsoever. I feel nothing. Interesting, very interesting. Well, let's have a look at the top side, up, or not the top side, but around the top edge here near our Wi-Fi IC. Remember we had all these blobages squeezing out here? What is this? Because if we have a look at our board view, we know that we've seen PP1V8 SDRAM up there, right? Right? What in the name of all things? And that is one, two, three. The fourth component over is PP1V8 SDRAM. That is a zero ohm resistor. R528RF. So the only way this would be causing trouble is if these two things got shorted together. And if the short was on the other side of this, then this resistor would have blown sky high right now since it's only rated for like a 32nd of a watt or something. So the short's not on the other side of that. That leads me to think that our short is either under the main PMIC, it could be one of these components snuggled up in here. It could be right in here, guys. Let's have a look there, okay? Let's look under the microscope. And in that spot, we would be looking at the far capacitor on our right. That would be on PP1V8 SDRAM. And it actually doesn't look like a capacitor at all, but it also does not seem to have gotten hot at all. Jeez, what a wild goose chase. All right, so let's check this with a the thermal camera one more time. I'm gonna be putting my power in right here. Looks like it's only gonna pull three amps of current. My supply is heating up. Strange, it's actually pulling less current now on both sides in parallel than it was before. <laughs> That's really weird. Let me try, I'm gonna turn it off a of parallel mode and just try to run one channel again. Let's see if that gives me anything different. Now we're just set to run on one channel. And that one channel pulls three amps of current. That's so weird. I wonder why I'm not getting that on two channels. 
Maybe the grounds aren't paralleled. Maybe I have to hook a jumper on the ground or something. All right, so here we go. Three amps of current into one V8S drum. I got nothing. Nothing at all. Let's go back to parallel mode. And I'll hook my probe onto the other output. Let's try that. Here we go. Here we go. Weird. Like setting the, the supply in parallel is drawing less current. I'm probably doing something really dumb. Yeah, this is three amps of current and I'm just, I'm not seeing any, like hardly any heat anywhere. Um, let's see, back over to the CPU side. And I'll put in our three amps of current here. Holy crap. Okay guys, that is three amps of current for a really long time and I'm just, I'm not getting anything even on the thermal camera. Let's look at it with our eyes again. I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the power for now and let's look at it. I mean, we know we've got all this solder swelled here. This might be one of those situations where it's like more efficient just to do a board swap. Wow, look at this. Okay, so let us look at the board view again, shall we? We know that on the top side, we could have a backlight, a short here at the backlight driver, but it does not have ground like right next to it, so that may not be as likely. Let's see if we can weigh our odds here. I mean, the most likely is going to be a ball under the CPU. I mean, we got one V8S trim and just right next to it, man, we've got, <sighs> that's the most likely spot, but we don't, wanna, we don't wanna talk about that. So we've got another spot down here. We've got this resistor, but it's really not directly, I mean, it's, it's not directly next to ground. So let's not check it just yet. Uh, we also have up here, hmm, toward the top of the board, we've got L5407RF and it has ground right next to it, right? What's that look like under the microscope? Ooh, that's all swelled to beat hell, right? But, That particular L, that inductor, it looks okay. That's our little blue one there, and it, it, it looks fine. It's not swelled around. So let's ignore that. I mean, they just really cooked this whole board, guys. Holy smokes. So now let us continue to explore this little board hell here. And then I'm just basically I'm following these lines. So we've now looked, uh, we sort of looked at the backlight driver. We have looked up here. We've looked at this thingy. That's kind of the top side of the board. We have not checked C1297. Let's, wait, is that? Yeah, C1297. Let us have a gander at C1297. C1297 is this one up here all by itself, right? Surely that's it, and surely that's not it. So. Let's, uh, let's not pay too much attention to that. 
Now, let us start looking all over the bottom of the board. We already checked the Wi-Fi area of the board, right? We, uh, hmm. So we've got these caps up here that sort of had ground right next to them. So let's have a look at those. I don't see anything up there that would be shorted. I think that all looks okay. Nothing pushed around. Let's continue our dig. Ah, we've got PP1V8S DRAM coming directly to this IC here. You know, any one of these could have a solder bridge on under it. It doesn't have to be the CPU. It's most likely the CPU, but it doesn't have to be. And being as that I'm not getting any thermal signatures or anything anywhere, I might just uh, I might just start pulling stuff off of this board. Hmm. Okay, I'm about to decide to start pulling stuff. Uh, we will probably ta tackle the NXP last, but I am concerned about the audio IC. I am concerned about some of these other caps. I'm really concerned that this thing down here does not look like a cap, but if it was not a cap, then I suspect it would have been blown sky high by three amps of current. I mean, this would have been our heat source, so that's most likely not a problem. And then what about these two here that are just kind of all smooshed together? What is, what is that? Eh, those are fine. Looks like we've got grounds touching each other, and um, that's probably about it. So no 1V8 SRAM under either of our touch ICs. We know those were off the board, but 1V8 SRAM is not there. We have 1V8 SRAM under the audio IC, right smack next to ground. And we have 1V8 SRAM under this one, right smack next to ground. And then our PMIC sort of not really next to ground. Okay, I'm gonna start pulling stuff, guys. Anybody disagree with me? No thermal signatures, no heat. This is pretty well a solder bridge. Where's it at? It's gonna be under the CPU, isn't it? All right, let's do it. Here we are under the microscope. I'm gonna start with our beloved audio IC. Piece of crap. For this, it looks like the gu has already been all loosened up. So we're gonna just take and flake some of that away. Hey, I'm finding balls down in here. Look at that. There'll be solder. No, wait, that's not a ball. I mean, it doesn't look like it was nudged, but I'm going to pull it off there anyway, since we do not need it for data. It don't need to go back on here. It is just not needed. So here we are. I'm going to start warming this up with hot air. And I'm just going to sort of let the board fall out from under it. Let's see if we can find this short and get the data out of this phone. If it's under the CPU, I'm going to recommend another shop. So let's start warming this up. I'm kind of going up and down the board and I'm, I'm warming the whole entire board up and then I'm going to come in on the audio IC and just sort of like pour the coals to it. Oop, I see some bubblage. Let's pour the coals to the audio IC while holding the board up in the air. I don't think there's any chance that I'm going to do, I'm going to overheat this board as much as they did. Now I'm just waiting for that audio IC to fall. Well, they got some really low bubbly flux. Like, my flux would not have bubbled so early. All right, there's our audio IC up. I don't see, uh, you know, I really, I don't see anything. We have no, no shorts here. Okay, where else can we check? So that actually looked good. I didn't see anything nudged. Now, under Stockholm, we do have a 1v8 right there, I mean, right next to it, but I don't feel like this guy nudged that. Do we have any 1v8 SRAM right next to this touch IC area? Now, we've just got this cap out here. A couple of caps in here. You know, if it was one of these caps up here, 
the thermal signature could just like be hiding. And then also the same is true if it's like one of these caps down in here. Let's just check to be sure the short is still there. I'm gonna use my multimeter. I'm gonna put my black probe on ground and we'll put our red probe on PP1V8S DRAM and we are getting 1.6 ohms. Uh, did the short become less? Let's check it next to the CPU. That gives me hope that it could be a capacitor. No, 0 0.4. It is like really, really firmly shorted. And you know, just to be on the safe side, this does not, I mean, that just does not look like a capacitor. Let's remove it. So we got rid of that one. Tell you what, while the board's still hot, let's go ahead and pull this one. Man, there's a lot of flux coming out from under this PMIC, guys. This PMIC has shit tons of flux coming out from under it. Do you think they had that PMIC off the board? had that PMIC off the board. If they've had the PMIC off the board, our odds are even higher that it's a CPU short because they probably had it off the board trying to figure this out. And you know, we don't have like ground right next to those PP1 V8 S DRAM pins on this thing. We just, we don't. Let's see if our short's still here. Two black probe on ground and we'll throw a red probe on PP1 V8 S DRAM. 0 0.3, 0 0.1 ohms to ground. It just keeps getting worse. Okay, well, um, let's uh, let's remove some more stuff, shall we? Let's you know narrow this down. So the next thing I'm going to remove, I'm going to remove. Uh, holy crap! Ball swelling around, man. This guy is. This is going to be the CPU, right? Holy crap! Is one V8 S trim like anywhere else other than? Like, do we have anything bottom of the board? Yes, we do. We absolutely do. Let's pull the bottom shield off of this. Before I get too crazy, I mean, seriously, I'm getting ready to pull the PMIC from this. I'm not thinking straight. Before we get too crazy, let's get the bottom shield off of it. You know, I'm not seeing any heat that on the thermal. That could be because the heat is down here under this shield. I mean, we're so, I'm so hell bent on the top end of this board, I'm not paying enough attention to the bottom. So let's start warming this up and drop the shield off of here. Huh, somebody bent, somebody must have bent my tweezers. What in the world? I can't even hold on to it with those anymore. Those are toast. All right. Here we go. Baby. Now let's have a look at that under the microscope, shall we? Oh yeah. We got all kinds of goodness down here, but I don't see any evidence of uh, anything that is going to give me any PP1 V8 S DRAM short. So let's have a look at the board view again. And you can see that we could potentially have PP1 V8 S DRAM shorted near the TriStar IC. And we could also have it shorted within the Tigris IC. But as far as bottom side stuff, that's uh, that's pretty well it, except for some test points. How about around NAND? Nothing around NAND, right? All right, well, before I get too crazy, we're going to let this board cool off. Have a look at it with the thermal camera again, with the bottom shield off of it, because what if it, what if it is TriStar? What if this, what if 
This board has trolled everybody, including myself, due to TriStar. I doubt it, but let's look at it anyway. Okay, so here we are looking at this again through the thermal camera. I'm going to tune out all the noise. You'll see up there at the top left of your screen is where I was running hot air. And now we're going to put 1.8 volts in right into PP1 V8S trim, and we're getting 3 amps of current. Nothing on thermal. All right, I'm going to go go up the board a little bit. I'm going to put our three amps of current in up here by the audio IC again. I've got in, I got thermal. Look at this. We've got heat. Now, why all of a sudden do I get heat now? Okay, so putting current in up here next to the audio I see I do have heat building what appears to be in a square shape over here so that's that's really strange um, flip this board back around and I'm going to do that again looking at it from another angle So there's three amps of current. Gosh, and there's just nothing heating up, man. Cannot see anything heating up. I think that square of heat that I seen was simply the traces inside the board heating up, right? I mean, is it the backlight driver? Let's flip this over and look at the top side once again. So here we are looking at the top side of the board once again, and I'm gonna put current right here into PP1 V8 SDRAM. We're drawing 3.1 amps of current. Adjust this camera a little. I mean, the CPU is vaguely hotter, right? CPU is vaguely hotter. Oh boy. I mean, it, it is a little bit warmer, right? Uh, hmm. Okay. Back here by TriStar. Can I touch this? I mean, sometimes I just need to touch it. Let's see. Let's get down here by TriStar and see if I can touch right here and run this current into yet one more place. One V8S dram is this little prick right here. So right there, that's where we're gonna run three amps of current in. Now let's look at this through a thermal camera while I pound my current in right there. So there we go, we're getting two amps of current. Plenty of heat there, and that is gonna be from the traces inside the board heating up. So let's tune that out. Let's do it again. We're at two amps of current. Pretty well building up heat right where I'm sticking this with a probe. And the heat's kind of gradually spreading up the board. Um, yeah, that's probably the traces inside the board getting hot. Well, <laughs> What do I do now? So I am just not finding any heat anywhere. We have no evidence of solder swelling around TriStar. 
The only evidence of solder swelling that we have is like around the CPU area, NAND, and you know, the whole top end of the board. This is most likely going to be a CPU short, but you know, typically on the iPhone 6, when they get sitting here for data recovery with prior repair attempt, they have almost always tried to refloat and nudge the PMIC. They've tried to replace the PMIC. Now, I have done many of those successfully, but I have also done many of those that ended in PP1 V8 SRAM shorts. So let's, uh, let's start pulling stuff. I'm gonna pull the PMIC off this board. We are going to just let the board fall out from under it, okay? So we'll start heating this up. I'm gonna get a hold of the PMIC. Let's yank it off the board and just see what it looks like underneath. There is a significant chance, and watch the flux start bubbling out from under it. There's a significant chance that I am not the first one to do this. I mean, it is loaded with flux underneath. So let's just grab it. Uh, oh, let's just grab it right here. Hmm, must be lead-free solder. All right, PMIC is up. We have a significant amount of oxidized pads underneath, but that's more likely to be from uh, from the way I pulled it. Let's just zoom in and have a look here. I don't see any bridging. And if we have a look at the board view, Let's just look at where the PMIC area is here. The area that we would be concerned about are these pins right up here. And then we have this one pin in the center. And honestly, that all looks really good. You know, unless we just pulled the bridge out of it just now by lifting the IC, I, I really don't think so. Let's go ahead now and have a check with the meter. We'll put our black probe on ground. And let's just check up here where we've been checking. Let's see what we get on 1v8 SDRAM. Still gonna be shorted. Yeah, 0.2 ohms. We got a nice firm short to ground. And uh, I really don't think it's gonna be the NXP I see up here. I just, I am not, I, I, I don't see that at all. The Mason I see looks okay, but then again, it don't. I mean, it looks like absolute, absolute hell but it doesn't have PP1 V8 SRAM under it anyways. So now we have pulled the PMIC. The only other chip that I would think we could have a short under would be this NXP IC. That would only be like if they flattened it. Uh, what does it look like on the board view? So that IC on the board view does have ground right next to it. We could have a short there. Let's pull it. It even looks like it might be a little crooked. Nope. Nope, we had no shorts there. And just to be certain, let's check it with a multimeter. 0, 0.0, the short's actually getting worse. So now we have removed, uh, we've removed the PMIC, which has that line on it. We've now removed our NXPIC, which has that line on it. I mean, I wonder if there's like anything unmarked here that I'm missing. I doubt it. I mean, I'm just, I'm beating around the obvious. I know that this is a CPU short now. Could be one of these caps, but even the most firmly shorted cap will show up on my thermal camera. I mean, it, it just does. Uh, not PMIC. Anything that eludes to the touch I see? Let's just follow a couple of these maybe. Mm, could be the backlight driver, man, but I really, really, really highly doubt it. Really doubt it. Let's check the backlight driver. We've got some short. Nope, that component's loose because I might have knocked it loose. All right. Let's, uh, we're gonna remove the backlight driver. 
For this, I'm going to start with the coil. We're going to throw a heatsink on the CPU just to be a smart ass. I mean, <laughs> not like this CPU is going to benefit from me putting a heatsink on it. And we're just going to kind of trim around the coil here. I mean, we did get a lot of heat right here. We got balls swelling around the coil. This short could be under the backlight driver. You know, it's like we've got almost a 100% chance that it's a short under the CPU or between the CPU and RAM or something. And we have a slim chance in hell that it's the backlight driver. So let's remove the backlight driver. Hey, I don't have to worry about screwing up touch ID. Furthermore, I think somebody else has already shorted this CPU underneath, guys. Let's just get, you know, get this out of the way. Nice and pretty there. We'll do the best job at removing the coil that uh, can possibly be done. There we go. Our nice coil out of the way. Look at me compulsively getting this ready for a new coil. Oops. Nobody's seen that. Just pretend that you were not watching. That did not happen. Okay, let's smooth on in on this driver. We don't need this driver for data anyways. All right, let's jab our blade under it and pick it up off the board. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, there we go. No short under the backlight driver. This was not the backlight driver. Just to be on the safe side. Ow, man, that nickel's hot. Let's put it back on the bench and let's check PP1V8S trim for a short to ground. Black probe on ground. Red probe on PP1V8S trim's ass, and we get 0 0.1. 0 0.2. Okay. So now we have removed the backlight driver. We have removed the PMIC. We have removed the NXP. We've pulled off a couple of caps here and there. This is just quite simply not going to be a TriStar problem, right? I mean, we do have solder swelling just right there. Could it be TriStar? I mean, we would have, we would have oozage, right? I don't see any sign of this solder down here heating. And if it was the IC itself that went bad, it would be putting out a thermal signature that looked like Chernobyl. Not the TriStar IC. Hmm. All right, guys, tell you what. I'm about 99.9% uh, .9 sure that this is going to be uh, balls shorted under the CPU or between the CPU and the memory. Um, this is a situation that I'm very familiar with, only I'm in a little bit of denial and I should have not, not, not spent that much time on this board. So um, this thing I'm going to, I might scratch my head on it for a few more seconds, but this is going to get recommended back to this customer um, for them to have a board swap done on it. And if they set up a repair with another shop that is doing board swaps, um, I will happily just mail it directly to that shop and not back to the customer. Because this came from like in South Africa or something. So anyways, guys, that's going to be the end of this video. A complete, total, miserable failure. But I do thank you for watching. Have a good day, everybody. I'll see you soon.